name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, a man, may the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the age of ages. Amen. Uh, today, as we read it in the Sinaxar, and if you probably noticed the readings, we celebrate the, um, on the 29th of almost every Coptic month um, the Annunciation, Nativity, and Resurrection of our Savior. <clears throat> and that's basically because, um, as we said before, the Feast of the Annunciation is um, the 29th of Paramhet, which is April 7th. Sometimes, most, sometimes we don't celebrate it if it falls during the Holy Week. And then nine full months after that is the Nativity, as you all know, um, on January 7th. And um, as history um, or the tradition of the Church tells us, the Holy Resurrection also fell on um, the 29th of Baramhat. So whenever the 29th comes, we remember these three feasts, except for the two um the two months in which um, St. Mary was not with the, the Holy Child um, in her womb. Um, so that's why we read this gospel very often, and we also read it on uh, the second Sunday of Kiak um, during the fasting um, to remember and prepare ourselves for the Holy Nativity Feast. <clears throat> so we, since we read this gospel a lot, we'll just focus on the, the last part in which, um, uh, what was St. Mary's response after the uh, Holy Archangel explained to her um, the mystery of the Incarnation? Um, and because this is what we're going to focus on today, but also this is what some of the fathers describe as the beginning of, of um, the fulfillment of what Archangel Gabriel said. So she wanted to understand because she had vowed to her, herself to the Lord. Um, and so this was not a doubt similar to that of Zacharias, um, who, whom we remember or who, whom we read about earlier in this chapter. Um, so what was it that she said that was uh, allowed God to work in her because Archangel Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the Most High shall overshadow you and that which is to be born for you will be called the Son of the Most High. Um, so what did she say? Yes, he said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And then the Archangel was happy with this. And God was happy with this response. And that's why the Archangel left because what was needed to be said or done was done. Um, and this is the main thing that God required of her and that requires he requires of us, is for us to basically just say, let it be to me according to your will, um, or manage my life as you see fit. Um, it's not a good translation uh, equivalent to that, but there's a very good word in Arabic, which is hazard, right? And um, this is one of the main lessons that they teach a monk when he enters the monastery or a nun. Um, <clears throat> and um, this is the idea of always being willing to say yes um, to God and to others. Um, and unfortunately, maybe in the culture here, um, it doesn't equate. And that's why we have to emphasize this is not a cultural thing but this is a spiritual um, message that all of us need to learn in order to get the blessings um, of being close to God. <clears throat> because sometimes people feel that when we're close to God, he does what we want. Or um, if, if, uh, if I grow in the spirit, then God will submit to my requests and my desires, right? but it's actually the opposite. We are the ones, when we get closer to him, we want to submit to his will and to, and to ple please him. Um, and uh, because we know deep down that there's a way that seems right to a man, but um, its end is the way of death, as the Proverbs teach us. Um, so what is our goal? What is our treasure? Who, who is in charge? We want God. We want to submit ourselves under the mighty hand of God. <clears throat> and um, this is a lot more difficult than it appears 
it seems glorious and it seems easy and it seems joyful, but when push comes to shove in our life, you no, know, we want to accomplish our will. Um, and we want God to submit to our will. Um, and oftentimes we notice when, when things get difficult, there's a difference in between the path that God wants for us and the path that we want for ourselves. Um, and um, many people say, oh, I want to know God's will. And then you need to ask yourself, do you really want to know his will? Because if his will does not align with yours, then you're in trouble because you're faced with a decision to make. Do I submit to his will or I do, do I just try to do my own thing? Um, <clears throat> of course, we know the answer to that. But the, the solution is to prepare ourselves way ahead of time to be ready to submit and to surrender to, to God. As, as St. James says, you know, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So um, there are many stories of people in, in their lives, um, or at least in the beginning of their lives, even in scripture, who didn't submit to the will of God, like Adam and Eve and Jonah and King Saul and, and, and all of these things. <clears throat> um, but uh, there is a great blessing in, in the person who is willing to submit. Um, and this submission is not, um, is not, should not be, it should be very joyful. Um, and and uh, there shouldn't be, and there should be a result of peace and joy um, and love that that emanates from the person after they have the spirit of the proper um, submitting to God and to others. <clears throat> and that's what, again, St. James says, the wisdom that from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield. So this idea of being willing to yield to others is important. Of course, not when it comes to sin or doing wrong. That's obvious. Um, but um, oftentimes when two people are in conflict, it's because their wills are different. And uh, when we submit, it shows that, okay, I will definitely, I, I don't care about what I want to be accomplished. I'll, I'll please you by doing what you will. So then there's no conflict anymore. Um, uh, so it, it saves you from um, trying to prove yourself or to be filled with uh, being puffed up like St. Paul says. Um, <clears throat> so what does the, the God tell us? In, in order to fulfill this ability to say Hadr, we, we don't just do it before God, but um, we submit ourselves to the church, to the elders, to our parents, to our boss, to our spouse, um, sometimes to our children, because we have a responsibility. Um, if, if, if there's a parent who always says yes, what happens to the children? Um, they, they have a responsibility to raise them in, in, in the proper direction. So they can't always say yes in, in that regard. <clears throat> Same thing with the servant. Um, but if your boss asks you to redo your work, you do it, right? If your parents say, take out the trash, you do it. Um, it's, it's simple, but it's different when you do it just because you know you have to or you're going to get punished if you, if you don't versus I'm doing this to submit to the higher authority of God who asked me to have this spirit. It's, it's, it's a different, it, it's a game changer in your life when you're doing this because you're willing to submit to God and anyone who asks you anything, right? You end up fulfilling the gospel of what Christ says in, in, on the Sermon of the Mount. Right? If someone asks you for, for your shirt, you give him your jacket as well. Or if he asks you to walk a mile, you walk with him too. Um, sometimes we make too many calculations and we ask too many questions, but at certain times, God wants us just to learn the lesson. Just say, okay, um, <clears throat> and I will be with you and I will bless you. So um, not insisting on your way um, is... is sometimes leads to sufferings, but the sufferings lead to joy and blessing. Um, and who's the perfect example of this? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, um, who St. Paul says, let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, um, uh, even the death of the cross. So, um, and St. Paul describes this more in the Hebrews, where he says, though he was a son, son of God, God and son of God, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Of course, Christ didn't need to learn anything, but this is teaching us that when we suffer with him, we gain a lot. Um, when we're willing to submit our, our, our desires and our wills and our thoughts and our opinions to that of others um, for the sake of Christ, then um, we learn. Uh, and so uh, this is the great grace and blessing um, that the Holy Virgin Mary teaches us today. <clears throat> um, what was the greeting? I think we talked about this a few years ago, but what was the greeting that Archangel Ma Ma uh, Gabriel gave to the Holy Virgin, which shocked her? He said several things. He said, hail to you, full of grace, number one. Number two, the Lord is with you, right? Number three, blessed are you among women. So usually in, in, in other places in scripture, when the angel appears, he doesn't give this type of greeting. No one else did he, he give this greeting to, right? <clears throat> but um, the person who is always submissive to God has much grace from God. He has, or she has much blessing and, and the Lord is with them. Um, and uh, this, is, this is the spirit that God wants in us. Um, <clears throat> as, uh, again, St. Peter says, um, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. So he doesn't just say, okay, um, children obey your parents. But he says, all of you be submissive to one another, to have the spirit. And he says, and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So this teaches us humility, which we all need. And, and when we have the spirit, then God gives us grace. Um, and that's why Archangel said, you are full of grace, because you have learned this lesson. And I'm sure that when I announce this to you, you will agree. Um, she had the, the, the right to say no, but God chose her because she, she, he knew she was going to say yes, as she said yes to everything. Um, from before. Um, so uh, one um, uh, uh, commentator says, the more one obeys, the more God's order orders multiply. Meaning, um, because God knows that he can work with us, he's going to give us more blessing to submit to him. Um, uh, sometimes people say, okay, I'll, I'll just uh, obey on this one thing and then leave me alone. That's, that's not the spirit of God. Once we feel and experience and taste the blessings of this submission, he's going to give us more opportunities to do so um, and reward us for it um, in the heavenly kingdom. Um, and this is what we mean when we call God Lord. Um, so the person who, who sees God as their master is submissive like the, the like St. Mary said, behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me. Whatever you say, I'll do. Um, it's, it's very hard in this day and age to have this spirit. But um, actually ev every generation or every person in, in their life, it's difficult to, to, to do this. Um, even there was one story of one of the monks I can't recall in the paradise where um, he was teaching the brethren and he said that there's, there's three great graces that God gives blessing uh, for. Um, he said, one is um, if you're sick and you take it patiently, and, and the other if you just live a holy life. And the third is if you're willing to submit and obey um, to, all, to everyone. Um, and this is the greatest of all. But for me, I choose the first <laughs> um, to be sick instead, because he knows the difficulty of, of what is asked of. Um, so um, uh, when we have 
this uh, spirit of, of submission to God and to others, it gives room for us to grow. You know the story of uh, St. John the Short, um, in, who, who his elder, Amba Pambo, told him to go and water a dead stick in the middle of the, the wilderness every day. Right? And it took him hours just to get the water, let alone go to, to the stick and, and water it. What happened after years? It flowered into a great tree which still exists today. And what did he say to, to the, the other monks? He said, come taste of the fruit of obedience. So um, God wants this fruit to be manifest in your life. And he wants um, to show others this, this is the blessing. Just like he's showing off St. Mary here today. See, see my child who is willing to submit to everything. I don't want you to submit to me just so that I have power over you. But I want to glorify you. I, I want to you to rejoice. I want you to be blessed and full of grace. So just take this first step by submitting to you. And then you'll see and know and understand that this was the proper course for you to take. May God give us the blessing and the understanding to submit to God and to others in, in, in the fear of God so that we may be filled with grace and blessing. The glory be to now and to age for Jesus. Yeah.